Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all of my students. I hope you're doing well today. It is 2021. <laughs> all right, I remember making my first video of 2020 and just being so excited about the future being here, 2020, the future. And uh, it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. But hey, we're in 2021 now. It's a, uh, you know, decent winter day here in Chicago, not too cold. We did see the sun yesterday, so that was pretty cool. All right, so today, what are we going to look at? So today we're going to look at a plug-in for Grasshopper called Lunchbox. This is probably, from what I can remember, one of the oldest plugins for Grasshopper, Lunchbox. And, you know, you can do several things with Lunchbox. It's, a, it's one of those things that you definitely need. And uh, what you see on my screen is a, a little space frame structure. So that's something we're going to do at the end of today's tutorial is look at a space frame structure. So we're going to look at making panels. We're going to look at making panel frames. We're going to look at making some structures. And there's some bonuses that are thrown in as we go. All right, before we jump into today's tutorial, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and search me up on YouTube and click on the red button for subscribe and click on the bell for all my notifications. Also, in the lower right of this video, there's a little subscribe button that you can click on, click on at the end. My head will pop up so you can click on it. There's so many ways to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, well, why? <laughs> all right. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name underscore my last name, Alfonso underscore Peluso. Connect with me, see what my students are up to. I've been posting a lot of my students' work, and I've been getting some really good feedback on it. So come and see what my students are up to. All right, Lunchbox. So I, I just did a Google search, Lunchbox for Grasshopper. And uh, a couple couple sites to look at. One is the creator of Lunchbox, which is a company called Proving Ground. They've been and are doing some really great stuff for Rhino and Revit. So you can check out their website, learn a little bit, read a little bit about Lunchbox. And then uh, to actually get the download, you can find it on Food for Rhino. So Lunchbox on Food for Rhino, you can download the latest plugin of Lunchbox. All right, let's jump into today's tutorial. All right, I'm just going to erase everything that I have here. All right, so let's jump on into this. So the first thing that we need is something to apply the panels to. So we're going to start with panels, diamond and hexagon. So I'm creating a lofted f surface lofted single surface. So I'm doing that by making two ellipses or ellipsy, however that's pronounced or said. All right, so we have one and I'm going to make the radius 8 and that's radius 1 is 8. I'll make radius 2 6. All right, so there's my base ellipse, size of that. Okay. And I'm going to make another one. And I'm going to make this one. I'm going to make this one seven, seven and five. So a little bit smaller, but I'm going to raise it up. So I'm going to give it a Z for this plane. So I'm going to type in four. And that's going to be in the Z. All right, so that raises that up four in the Z. All right, so this is, these are our two ellipses, and we're going to make a loft. 
between this. Now what's important about this loft is it's creating or generating a single surface so that's important when you're working with lunchbox you're gonna need to work with single surfaces so however you're creating those single surfaces so not poly surfaces or not what grasshopper calls a B rep for boundary representation so no poly surfaces no B reps um, the surface also needs to be untrimmed so it uh, it doesn't quite work on a trimmed surface either so a loft you see this says one locally defined value untrimmed surface so that's however you're making your surfaces that's super important they need to be untrimmed surfaces all right okie dokie all right so now we have our lofted surface so now let's let's uh, I'm gonna make a scribble here so that, that's what I want to type in the scribble but I'm gonna make a scribble and I'm gonna call this panels try to keep this definition a little bit organized for you all all right All right, so panels. I said I was going to make a diamond and a hexagon. Okay, so where's lunchbox? There's lunchbox. It's the L, or if I open that up, I can make it say lunchbox. So there's my lunchbox. Okay, so under panels, I'm going to choose diamond. Okay, so you see the input is surface. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. All right, I'm going to hide all this stuff. Okay, so I have this really cool like origami folding structure and I'm going to make my U and V divisions. I'm going to make so the U, those are the vertical in this case. And then the V are the horizontal. So the, as it goes around the ellipse. All right, so that looks more natural looks decent okay so those are my diamond panels now what I can do with those diamond panels is I can turn them into what's called a frame so that they have holes in the middle of it so let's look at doing that so that's gonna bring us into our panel frame so we're going to do this for both diamond and hexagon because it's a little bit different. So there's panels. And then if I get a scribble, this is going to be panel frame. Draw a little line, separate these. Okay, so panel frame. Now that's found over here under generate. So I'm going to go down under generate and I'm going to find panel frame. So we're not covering every single uh, capsule in Grasshopper, but we're covering, uh, or I should say lunchbox, we're covering enough to really introduce you to lunchbox and, and get using it. Uh, so let's plug this in. Okay. Now I'm going to hide some things as I go. All right, so that's that's what I have here. Okay, so I don't quite have the holes in the center. I'm not seeing those yet. Those I'm going to find under panel frame. So there's panel frame and there's panel. So I'm going to use a geometry container and go ahead and plug that in. And I'm going to turn this one off. Okay, so now we're seeing the holes in the in the center. Very nice, beautiful pattern here. Now we're missing uh, in this pattern. We're missing on the far right. We're missing some triangles. So um, what I what you'll notice is there's some tri panels. So there's the diamond, the full diamond, and then there's the triangular panels. So if I plug that also in with my shift key. I'm going to get those triangular panels and those showed up at the top too so if I unplug them so it's like that and then if I plug in 
the triangular patterns, we get that. Triangular panels. All right. Pretty cool. So now we're going to do this for a hexagon. So let's go in and turn this off. So do the same thing for the hexagon. So under panels, I'm going to get a hexagon. Now it says hexagon cells. It doesn't say hexagon panels. So this is a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to plug my loft in. And we're going to take this 6 and 20 and go ahead and reuse it. So go on the U and the V. All right, so there's our hexagon. And this hexagon also has what's called a T parameter, set to 0.25. Let's take a look at that. So if I type in, double click and type in 0.25, and I slide this, it's changing the shape of the hexagon. All right, so I'm going to go somewhere about there. Okay, there is there are the hexagon cells. So it's more like a wireframe of a hexagon. I want it to look like what we had up here where we had these this nice uh, panel frame with the hole in the middle of it. So uh, that's what I'm looking for. All right, so what we're going to do, so um, going to our bonus, we're going to look at scale and loft. Okay, so... What I need to do is I need to scale these lines so that they're smaller. Okay, so let's just walk through this. So I'm going to double click, type in scale. I'm going to plug my hexagon cells into the geometry of scale. So you see that ring, that whole ring just scaled itself down. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to scale all of these cells or these wireframes from their center points. And I have their center points. I have it here. So that's going to be my center. Okay, so now you see those all scaled down in place at the right location. And then the scale factor, we haven't looked at that in either of these cases. So we're going to get a chance to look at it now. All right, so the scale factor by default is 0.5. I'm going to use a knob, control knob. Okay, so I'm going to make that bigger. All right. Okay, so here's what I need to do now. I need to loft between the hexagon cells and the new offset geometry. And this is uh, a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to make is I'm going to make two curve containers to contain these curves in. Okay, so that's just plugged into the scale. And this one's plugged into that hexagon cells. Move this out of the way a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna need to loft these together now. To properly get these to loft, I need to graft a tree between these or else the loft is not going to work. Okay. That tells it to go from one curve to the other, from the original to the scaled, the original to the scaled. That's what the that's what the graph does. Okay, look at that. Really nice. So, and then we have the knob to control how big or how small. Okay. Now, let's uh let's hide all this. And this and let's turn on this geometry. And let's just add a, a knob, control knob up there. So 
So you see there what we can have some control over. Very cool. All right, let's hide this. All right, awesome. This is going great. All right, so we've looked at panels. We've looked at a panel frame. And now we're going to look at structure. So we're going to look at a diagrid space structure to begin with. So let's uh, just organize this a little bit. Oh, I love the, the not so straight lines that I can draw. The not so straight lines that I can draw in Grasshopper. All right. All right, let me add a scribble. All right, so this one's going to be called structure. Okay, so what we can do is we can take our loft. Okay, we have our loft. I'm just going to put that in a surface container. Okay, there's our loft. Bring that down here. Okay, so from structure we're going to look at using, or not using, but creating. We'll start with a diagrid structure. Okay. All right, so I was missing a, a comma here. I was wondering what was going on there. So we got diagrid, comma, space trust structure one. I was wondering, what's a diagrid space trust structure one? It's actually just diagrid and space truss structure. All right, so we're going to plug this into our surface. And we'll look at using our, what we used above, which was six vertically and 20 as it goes around the ellipse horizontally. OK, so this is pretty cool. All right, so it's it's about getting something that is uh, is real. <laughs> I want to make something real, like uh, what what we had up here when we had this and this. It's closer to real. These these don't have a thickness. They would need, you know, I would probably most likely bake these into. Uh, Rhino and do an offset surface. I would try that, but they do they do need a thickness, and that can be tricky sometimes. Um, sometimes using other software like uh, Netfab can help you um, get a thickness on some of these, but they would need some sort of thickness. Um, I'm thinking of these as you know something that you could make, and maybe you're th going to be 3D printing these. So um, that's something to surely think about. So right now, this is just a wireframe. There's nothing real about it. So I want to start to make this real. So I have structure lines and structure nodes. OK, we'll look at two ways. One is the easy way out, uh, which is pipe. And pipe isn't all that bad, as computers have gotten faster, um, because it's, it is intense on the computer to make a pipe. But you know, let's face it, a lot of this geometry that we create is intense on the computer. So the problem with the pipe is I can't control how many segments that it's making the pipe out of. I, maybe I only want to make it out of three segments around or, or 12 segments around. I can't control that. So I don't know how many, how many segments it's using. It's just making a NURBS pipe, which is, again, pretty intense. Okay, so let's look at the radius. I'm going to make this a radius of 0 0.07. I'm working pretty small. Your radius might be might be bigger than that. Okay, so 0 0.07. Now if I zoom in, I'm going to notice um, the capping. Okay, I have some options for capping. I can right click on this. I can do flat cap. I can do a, a round cap. Okay, the round cap is kind of nice because it puts the, the sphere inside the other. So that's a, definitely a, a really good option there. If I choose none, um, what I can try to make use of, let me just move this out of the way. Oops. 
and move these two. What I can try to make use of is the structural node. So I can you make a sphere and I can plug that into the structural node and you're gonna see if I zoom out and made all these spheres at those structural nodes and I can control the radii of this so maybe 0.10 and then if I zoom in I have the spheres at each one of those connections okay so that's one way to make something real something that I could something that I could 3D print for sure. Okay, so let's let's look at another way to do this because I was you know beefing on the pipe and saying that the pipe wasn't uh, the best the best way to go about it. So let's look at another way to do this. So I'm just gonna move these over and I'm gonna turn preview off. Okay, so under this bonus something else that I have listed here is perp frames. So perp frames is great. If you've never used perp frames, uh, we're going to use it right now. Okay, so I'm going to double click, type in perp frames. So we want frames, plural, in this case. Okay, the curve, I'm going to plug my structure lines in. Okay, I get a bunch of these crazy grids and uh, there's a count associated so if I put one in just to see this put one in for the count there's these perpendicular to each line these grids and if yours are really huge in Grasshopper if you go to display preview plane I call them grids preview plane size like yours might be I don't know what the default is the default could be 10 so that's these huge ones um, so I'm going to display preview plane size and I'm going to make this one. Okay. Alright, and the default was 10. I like that default of 10, to be honest with you. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to take what's on the perp frames, or we're, we're going to put on the perp frame, we're going to draw on the perp frame uh, a polygon. And I'm just going to draw a triangle. Triangle should be less intense than a, a, a pipe. So the radius of that triangle, I'm going to try 0 0.07. Okay, so if I was if I was to look at all these perp frames, right now there's a hexagon on the center that's what's in green there's a hexagon right there hexagon 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 okay the number of segments if I double click and put three in okay now I have a triangle there's my triangle there's my triangle so I'm gonna loft between all those triangles So that's one way to do it. And let's let's turn a bunch of this stuff off. Okay, so here we are. With it's just a little lighter now. Okay, it's triangular, it's a little lighter. I can use those same same nodes, right? Those same same spheres so if I take my structure nodes just turn it on basically alright let's see where are those at there they are alright as long as they're big enough to take take in all that's being connected there alright super fantastic right there all right, we have a really cool diagrid, something real, something we could print. Okay, so the last one I want to look at is I want to look at a space truss structure. And I think, you know, one reason I'm looking at this is it reminds me of what's happening with this company called Branch Technology. And Branch Technology is a company, it was a startup company in um, 
I think it was Chattanooga, Tennessee. And they had this idea that you could make 3D printed structures. And uh, originally, I think their idea was that these are embedded in, in wall systems. But this image on the right is, uh, at the moment, I think the world's largest 3D printed structure. This is all just, you know, this is all your standard plastic 3D printed uh, material. But it's it uses this diagrid or space frame, I should say. So here you see this is the KUKA robot that does the extruding of the uh, of the plastic, and then this is one example of this space frame structure. So space frame structure is has a lot of strength to it. Uh, so that's one reason I want to look at that. Okay, so. Let me go ahead and hide this stuff. Okay, so this is structure. This was a this was a diagrid structure. So let's uh, put this up here. Add another scribble. This is the diagrid. And I'm going to copy and paste this line so I don't have to torture myself with not being able to draw another straight line. <laughs> All right, so that's that's my diagrid. This is going to be the space frame. Okay. All right, so here is our little surface that we're just going to keep using for right now. All right, so under structure, there's a space frame truss structure one and space frame structure two. Space frame structure two, we'll look at using two surfaces. Space frame structure one is just looking at one surface. Okay, and here's my one surface. All right, so copy and paste these so here's our 6 and our 20 and the other thing we have is we have the depth of that truss right now it's 5 I'm going to try something like 1.555 just a random number that I like using with three decimal points all right, you see, I'll have some control over this later of how big or small I want this. Okay. So that's our, our wireframe. So now we have the primary lines in both directions. We have the web lines. We have the structure nodes. So let's start taking a look at this stuff. So I'm going to use I'm going to use pipe and plug that in and I'm going to make that radius 0 0.07. Okay, so we'll start to see as I as I plug these in what they actually are. So this is these rings on the outside, horizontal and vertically. And then we have these, which are on the inside horizontally and vertically. And then we have the web, which is going to be the diagonal lines. Okay, and then we have the nodes. So let's just take take our one of our spheres from above. Copy and paste that. Plug in the structure nodes. All right. Those are pretty small. Let's uh let's make those a little bit bigger. Oh, this is turned off. I'm like, what is happening here? 
preview on. I want preview on. Those of you at home, I want preview on. Alright, there we go. Those spheres are pretty... They're pretty heavy on the computer, no doubt about that. Okay. Alright, so there we have that. Alright, and all I did to make it pretty was I baked it. I just took these pipes and spheres, I right clicked, and I baked. Save this. And I had my view set to rendered. Nice. And I put a little plane underneath it for some shadows. All right, so there you have it, Lunchbox. Great little plugin. It's taken me a long time. I don't know why to make a video, but great plugin. It's been around a long time. Uh, I hope you enjoy the plugin. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment. Let's get some more comments going. Leave me a comment. What you like, what you didn't like. <laughs> I like hearing both. I hear. I've heard them all. There's sometimes I've made these videos without having my headset on uh, or having set the mic to my headset so you'll get the computer fan kick it in. And someone recently asked why I made a video on an airplane hanger. And I laughed at that. I thought that was really funny. That was great. All right. So leave me some comments. Uh, on the left, my head is going to pop up in the upper left. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead. What are you waiting for? Click on that to subscribe. In the upper right, I'll put some links to some other videos. Not sure what those are going to be. All right. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one.